Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, oh, silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds fear and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. Good morning. We are so pleased that you have joined us for today's Christmas candle lighting service. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing at this moment, aside from being present to us, we just want to invite you to stop that and be fully present because this is a joyful, wonderful time in the season of the church. Go tell it on the mountain. Doesn't that feel wonderful? Our word today is joy. Joy dawns in my grateful heart. Can you feel that in your body? Ah, joy dawns in my grateful heart. Joy to the world, the carol echoes, the joyous message proclaiming the Messiah's birth. Today, I feel the same triumphant joy awakening in me. I may have endured a long and cumbersome journey on the way to discover the joy that is alive in me, the truth of me as a spiritual being, I may have spent years denying my spiritual identity, thinking that fulfillment, wholeness, and abundance were for others and not for me. Now, as I've made the Advent journey, I have kindled my faith, felt the tranquility and comfort of peace, and received the soothing touch of deep and abiding love. Those gifts have led me to understand with deep gratitude that joy is mine to know, to feel, and to live. Our word today is inspired by the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Oh, and so I ask that you would join me now in a few moments of prayer. Oh, we just take a deep breath together and allow ourselves to settle in, to be fully present. Joy dawns in my grateful heart. Mm. 
the days before Christmas can be very busy, active, many, many outer activities to attend to. It's all good, and we bless that activity, and at the same time, we pull in and take time to allow the joy to dawn in our grateful heart. And so if we're caught up in too much busyness, too much activity, we take time to breathe deeply and invite joy. Oh, joy, joy, joy down in my heart. And so today we allow the joy of the birth of Christ to fill our hearts and minds and to guide us through this day and all the days ahead. Please join me now in speaking our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me now in speaking our statement of faith. This is the one principle that all of unity is built on and the one that we practice in our daily lives. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us Adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing, choirs of angels, singing exultation. Oh, sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the heart. Adore him, oh come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee on this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be your glory. adore him, oh come let us adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. We want to invite you to our holiday services coming up on Christmas Eve at six o'clock is another candle lighting service that will be different and also very, very special. 
Our burning bowl services are going to be a little different this year, just, just as are our candle lighting services. It'll be actually a, a service of release and letters to God. This is one of our favorite services throughout the year. And if you have not received your letter uh, to God back, uh, if you wrote one last year and it hasn't been mailed back to you yet, you need to call us and let us know because we have sent them out and I hope you've gotten them and realized that everything you put into your letter has been uh, manifested in your life. So, <clears throat> and then on Thursday, December the 31st, New Year's Eve, is our World Day of Peace service. Again, a beautiful service of bringing people together in one consciousness of peace for our world. So we hope you'll enjoy and, and join us <laughs> to enjoy those services with us. Because the order of the service today is such that it really is awkward to do the offertory at the end of the service, what I want to do is to mention it right now. You know, you have been so generous and so wonderfully supportive of your church, and we are truly grateful that you are continuing to support Unity of Daytona Beach so that we can continue to minister not only to you, but to the larger world. And so as you make your plans to give your gift today, or if you have sent one recently, I ask that you would just hold in consciousness the idea that God is source, unlimited, unconditional for you for this church community, and for every person on this planet. And so as you think about your gift, however it is that you plan to uh, give that gift, or if you have given it, then I ask that you would bless it with our affirmation of abundance, which is divine love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I give. Thank you, God, and it is so. Merry Christmas, Christ is born within us. It's a very extraordinary day. Hallelujah, let the Christ within us radiate so we can celebrate this day. Make a joyful sound that sleigh bells jingle. Joy is always found when love thoughts tingle. Merry Christmas, let us join in oneness. Though your horn for Christ in you is born today. On this merry Christmas day. Merry Christmas, Christ is born within us. It's a very extraordinary day. Hallelujah, let the Christ within us radiate so we can celebrate this day make a joyful sound that sleigh bells jingle joy is always found when love thoughts tingle merry christmas let us join in oneness Lord, your horn for christ in you is born to stay on this merry christmas day Each week of Advent, we have lighted a candle representing a different quality of God that expresses through humankind. The lighting of the candle symbolizes our willingness and intention to embrace these qualities of God in ourselves and to demonstrate them to the best of our ability in our daily activities. The first week, we lit a candle for the quality of hope 
the Apostle Paul described our greatest hope as Christ in you, the hope of glory. And in the second week, we lit a candle for the quality of peace, remembering Jesus' promise, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Last week, we lit a candle for the quality of love, remembering his teaching, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus assures us of our potential for joy, saying these things I have spoken to you, that my joy, my consciousness of God, might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Today we light a candle for the quality of joy. And we also light the large white candle at the center of the wreath, which represents the light of Jesus and the message of the Christ within, which he brought to all people. joy, abundant joy. Prepare with me as we join together for this quiet time, this place where we have the opportunity to practice the silence. So let us breathe together. We'll inhale that breath, that amazing life-giving breath. Ah, and feel that joy. Feel that joy. Just settle in where you are right now. And just as Reverend Carmen had mentioned earlier, let's just set aside some of the busyness that this season wants to call to us for. We we'll just gently set it over right now. We can come back to it later. But this is a special time. A special time where we make a conscious choice, actively choosing to step away from the outer distractions. And 
center ourselves once again within for we have made this advent journey together we've kindled the faith We have felt the tranquility and comfort of peace. And we have received that soothing touch of deep and abiding love. Breathe that in. All of these precious, precious gifts of this Advent season and all of these gifts have led us to understand with deep gratitude that joy is ours to know joy is ours to feel joy is ours to live just take that within and breathe with me perhaps feel some excitement some excitement with that energy of joy within Deep gratitude, saying again, thank you, God. Thank you, God. We are so grateful. We are so blessed. Grateful to be immersed in this Advent season. Grateful to have our awareness and understanding expand just a little bit more this year. Maybe, in, maybe a lot this year. Breathe with me. Release. Just in these few moments, let's just step away from that thinking mind and just come on down to your heart space. Maybe place your hands there if you choose. Let us know this morning that we were meant to have a life filled with joy. A joy that's not dependent on outer circumstances. It's that joy that is absolute, unwavering, always present, the knowing of the truth of who we are, Christed being. And that we have come to be the light of the world just as our master teacher taught, just as his birth brought to this world. The birthing of that Christ consciousness. And that joy bubbles up within us and we know it so well because it speaks to us and tells us. There is no darkness that can dispel that light, that amazing Christ light. Breathe that in with me. Release that breath. And join me now as we move into the silence and allow this Advent joy to radiate through our entire being.
breed with they once again. And exhale that breath. And as we come back to this place and this space, and as this service continues to unfold here this morning, we make a choice to live out all the gifts that this Advent season has brought to us. Abundant faith, abundant peace, abundant love, and abundant joy. And so it is. Cold are the people, winter of life, we tremble in shadows this cold endless night. Frozen in the snow, the roses sleeping, flowers that will echo the sun. in the distance call in the night on when you enfold us you'll speak of the light gentle on the ear you whisper softly rumors of a dawn so embracing Breathless love awaits darkened souls. Soon will we know of the morning. Spirit among us, shine like the star. for all, all of you for being here with us this morning. Uh, what a beautiful slide, Jeannie, you had up there. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, there it is again. Just take that in with me for a minute. Isn't that precious? It's just like, wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to this Christmas Sunday, I'm calling it. <laughs> And again, we are so grateful that you've chosen to be here with us on this very special season, this very special day. 
So come with me for just a minute and let's remember what Christmas Sundays have been like here in the past at Unity of Daytona Beach. Just think about it for a minute. We're all donning our holiday clothing, ladies in their beautiful dresses, their scarves, their sweaters, the men wearing Christmas ties. I already commented on Ken's this morning. <laughs> Amazing Christmas sweaters and, and maybe even an ugly Christmas sweater or two in there as well, right? <laughs> Maybe some vests, maybe even a Christmas hat or two in the crowd. Can you remember that energy of excitement, how it would feel in here? We're all scurrying around perhaps to deliver a couple of Christmas cards to one another, maybe a gift, spread a little extra cheer to one another before the service begins. And we'd all hurry on back in here to the sanctuary and settle in for a beautiful soul-feeding event from our beloved Reverend Carmen. And the anticipation of the candle lighting service. We all love that, don't we? And many of us were candle lighters during those times. And that type of volunteering on that day in particular held an exceptional gift in it. And, and we just had a special feeling of all of it to everyone who said yes to that type of service. So take it in with me. Just, just remember. We'll say, ah, yes. Christmas at Unity of Daytona Beach is always a very special time. As well as remembering some of your own personal Christmas times of the past. Intimate times of gathering with family and friends and the decorations and the just right Christmas tree, the stockings, Christmas carols. And of course, wonderful food. <laughs> All of your favorites, just waiting to be savored. Thank you, God, for beautiful, rich memories that warmed our hearts then and now. And here we are today, dear friends, Christmas present. So we may feel that Christmas 2020 is anything but normal. Most everything about this holiday season has changed for most of us. And the mind wants to ask, where are you, Christmas? And yes, that is the name of a song. <laughs> and the credit goes out to our very own amazing Dr. Becky, because after service last week, she and I were listening to that song. And I told her at that moment, I said, hey, I think that's the title of next week's lesson, and it is. So part of the lyrics of that song are this. It says, where are you, Christmas? Why can't I find you? Why have you gone away? Where is the laughter you used to bring me? Why can't I hear the music play? My world is changing. I'm rearranging. Does that mean Christmas changes too? Breathe. <laughs> well, perhaps. Perhaps if our awareness of Christmas and its great blessings are strictly based on the human experience and only what our senses can take in, our five senses, right? Perhaps. So I have a sharing with you from, a, from another point of that, from a beloved Unity minister that's out at Unity Village, Reverend Mark Fuss, and he shared this, again in the Advent booklet, if, if you choose to take a peek at that. And here's how it begins. And he says, bah humbug. Did anybody have those thoughts at all this year? Bah humbug. Another, and he says, another crowded Christmas in New York City, the constant carols, colorful lights, Endless shopping held no joy. Christmas had long lost its meaning and magic for me. During those days, my skin was thick and my heart wore armor. Not even a visit from my mother and her friend Vicki could lift my spirits. A week of shopping, Broadway plays, and the tree at Rockefeller Center. I was numb to all of it. From the outside, my life looked pretty good. I lived in Manhattan with a great job. That included hosting Broadway stars, authors, singers for parties, benefits and openings. 
I had a beautiful apartment on the 35th floor of Waterside Plaza. It seemed as if I was living the high life. The inside was a different story. A decade of alcohol, addiction, and self-loathing had taken its toll. Work was a daily, brittle battle to stay focused. And if not estranged from family, I was thousands, thousands of miles apart. My life as planned was devoid of any spirituality, love, or joy. Late one afternoon with time to kill before the next play and looking for something to fill our time, I remember I had a new Christmas CD, Christmas Tide, by opera singer Jesse Norman. We gathered in the living room with its breathtaking view the city lights twinkling from the World Trade Center and the Chrysler Building. The sun was setting across the East River, a view I had become immune to, but they would enjoy it. From, that mo from the moment that the music began, enveloping us in the surround sound, it was as if a warm blanket descended on the room. No one spoke for the next hour. The music and Jesse's magnificent voice danced, soared, and soothed my soul. It grew darker outside, and the lights of the city sparkled as if alive. And as we listened, I occasionally had thoughts of how surreal it was. This can't be happening. Before the music had pulled me back in. And then it happened. A carol I hadn't heard before began. The melody soothing and uplifting, and the lyrics simple. It said, Truth and love and hope abide this Christmas tide. For years, I've described this as my Grinch moment, the moment when my heart grew three sizes. In truth, it was the most magical and transcendent moment I've ever experienced. A sense of peace and love almost overwhelmed me. A knowing from deep within that no matter how bad things may seem, truth and love and hope abide. That lyric became a mantra of sorts for me. Now, 27 years later, in the face of any pain or loss, in times of grief or darkness, I say again, truth and love and hope abide. When I seek it, I always find it. This Christmas, I hold that truth for each of you. As challenging, unsettling, and difficult as this year has been, please remember this. You are resilient. You are loved. And I lift you up. Truth and love and hope abide this Christmas time. Ah, thank you, Reverend Mark. Beautiful story. Beautiful story. My dear family, we have an opportunity, perhaps even greater than in recent years. This Christmas season is inviting us to a rebirthing of our own Christ consciousness, to love more to take time away from outer distractions and to spend time within. If this year's Christmas season holds less holiday activity, could we count that as a priceless gift? A gift to nourish our soul's growth? A precious time to get quiet and to go to that most sacred place of the Most High and become open willing and receptive to that still small voice. I invite us to ask our own questions to this new consciousness that is birthing. What is my soul's desire for me this Christmas time? How may I grow into a more expansive version of my Christ self? What is mine to birth this year? 
that can only be done in this very time, right here, right now, Christmas 2020. Divine order and divine timing, we know, are always present. Each time we say yes to this Christmas experience of allowing our inner Christ, our sacred self, to shine, faith, hope, love, and joy energize us and this world. I share with you now a prayer from Reverend Unity Minister, Reverend James Dillett Freeman. It's entitled, My Prayer for You This Christmas. Take a breath with me. May there always be room in your heart for divinity to find a birthing place. May you be holy as the angels were, faithful as the shepherds were, humble as the cattle were, and wise as the wise men were. May you have the compassion Mary had and the understanding Joseph had, and may the blessings of the Christ child be yours, not because of his birthnight long ago, but because his love is born in you today. That's worth repeating. Because his love is born in you today. Another breath. <sighs> Jesus assured us, saying, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This, my dear ones, is the joy of Christmas. And so it is. Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod. When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? 
creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child you're holding is the great Mary, did you know Mary, did you <laughs> oh, so just take that in. Wow, didn't that leave you with some wonderful Christmas energy? The Christmas story is told in a scripture from the Gospel of Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be enrolled, every one, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Today, friends, it is our intention and our desire to fully embody the deepest meaning of that story, to go to the mystical part of it and allow it to be our own story. Today's an opportunity for you to receive joy, to know that the true gift of Christmas lives in you. It is life changing a shift in consciousness that is possible right now this very moment you are surrounded by the love of friends who will support you in remembering that christmas is all about giving birth to what is real in you the christ through the candle lighting ceremony, we seek to give outer expression to the inner mystical meaning of Christmas, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We will symbolically and literally share our light as an affirmation of our willingness to rebirth our own divine nature. During this time, we intentionally invite the light of the Christ to radiate through our minds and hearts 
to illuminate us with a deeper, more personal understanding of the words, Christ is born. The large white candle in the center of our Advent wreath, which represents the Christ, reminds us of Jesus who said, I am the light of the world, and who said of you and me and all others, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The light of Christ is forever burning within us, integrated with this Christ light and represented by the 12 disciples, our 12 spiritual powers that Jesus expressed throughout his life. They are the powers of faith, strength, discernment, love, power, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, release, and life. These same spiritual powers abide within and express through each one of us from the time of our birth. They remain with us always, though the level of their expression varies according to our individual choices. Some of us are expressing our spiritual powers to a high degree, while others are expressing them only a little or perhaps inconsistently. But deep in our hearts, we all know the truth that we were born to express our God-given potential powers expansively to be the Christ in expression, the light of the world. We now call our spiritual powers into greater activity by affirming them in a prayerful manner through our candle lighting ceremony. We now light 12 candles as a sign of our desires to more fully demonstrate the attributes of God within us. As each candle is lit from the Christ candle, I encourage you to allow that particular power to more fully expand within you. We light this blue candle for the disciple Peter, who represents faith in us and sees all things are possible with God. Next, we light a candle for the disciple Peter, who represents faith, <clears throat> excuse me, Andrew, <laughs> who represents spiritual strength, our ability to persevere and overcome all worldly obstacles. We now light a candle for the disciple James, son of Zebedee, who represents discernment, our ability to make wise, well thought out decisions, to put things into proper perspective and make best choices through spiritual judgment, judging not by appearances, but according to spiritual law. Our next candle is lighted for the disciple John, who represents love, the universal healer and harmonizer of our lives and the world. <clears throat> the next candle is lighted for the disciple Philip, who represents power, to boldly speak the word of truth. This candle is lighted for the disciple Bartholomew, who represents imagination, our ability to shape and mold divine substance according to our thoughts, ideas, and beliefs. This next candle is lighted for the disciple Thomas, who represents understanding our ability to look beyond personal opinion and know the truth. This candle is lighted for the disciple Matthew, 
who represents will to surrender ego needs and personal desires to God's will and perfect plan of good for our life. Thy will be done. This candle is lighted for the disciple James, son of Alphaeus, who represents order, the first law of the universe, which underlies all appearances and ensures timely outworking of all good things. We now light a candle for the disciple Simon, the zealot, who represents zeal, our ability to enthusiastically accept and express divine ideas. We light this candle for the disciple Thaddeus, who represents release, the power to freely let go of limited beliefs, misunderstandings, resentment, excesses, all that no longer serves our highest purpose. We let go and let God. And last, this candle is lighted for the disciple Judas, who represents divine life, that which animates and gives spiritual energy to material ideas. Our prayer is that all received at the Christmas envelope, which includes two candles, one for today's service and one for Christmas Eve. Please choose one of the candles and keep it with you for the remainder of this service. By now, you may have read the message attached to your candle. If not, we ask that you would do that now. This message is especially for you. Your own Christ spirit led you to it. And if you choose, it can be many things for you. Guidance, instruction, support, and inspiration. I encourage you to reflect upon your message during your prayer times throughout the holiday season and beyond. Your candle is a reminder that you have been entrusted with a gift of God, the Christ within you. Just as Jesus became the light of the world by letting his light shine, so that same Christ light quickened and growing within you is to become the light of your personal world. It is even intended that your light would radiate out beyond yourself and into the lives of others. Your candle also serves as a reminder that you alone can accept and bring forth the light that is within you. Others may seek to inspire you, but a decision to express the Christ is yours alone. I light this candle for our church community, knowing that Christ in us brings greater joy, love, wisdom, peace, understanding, growth, and abundance to all. I light this candle for the unity movement, knowing that through Christ we grow in love and service to the world. all people everywhere through the rebirthing of Christ in our hearts there is peace on earth this simple ceremony becomes a prayer of the hand and the heart that the truth that it symbolizes will be speedily manifested in us now join with us as you hold your candles high and let your light shine, know that that is happening now and join us as we sing Joy to the World.
joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive our King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. The Savior reigns, that man the songs employ. While fields and floods, rock hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and of his law and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love yes joy to the world thank you all thank you so much for sharing in this special service with us we now go forward knowing that the christ is born in us this day God bless you and your families, and Merry Christmas.